Uh, you mentioned the word failure in there, and, and when I did some research on you over the last few weeks, one of the things you do seem to be really pushing is this whole uh, notion of failure is good. Um, can you, and you told the, uh, the Direct magazine, you said, uh, we all need to have a bigger appetite for failure. So, Yeah, I, w I mean, look, I don't say failure is good in itself, but it, you shouldn't be scared of failure. Yeah. If you're scared of failure, you won't push yourself, you won't find out, you know, what's... You know what you need to know, and yeah. it, I don't think I'm saying anything particularly controversial when I say yeah. you learn an awful lot more from when you get things wrong than when you yeah. get things right. Yeah. I absolutely believe that you know it's easy to run a business when everything is going well. You really learn a lot about the quality of people running a business when things are going badly. Mm. Um, so, what I think we can't afford to do is to castigate people for failing. Mm. Um, and I think in this country we're so much better at it now than we used to be. You know, everyone says, "Oh, the Americans, you know, they celebrate failure." They don't but they celebrate what people learn out of it, and yeah. we are starting to do that. And it's so true, because if you, as I say, if you don't get things wrong, you don't know. And when you get things wrong, and then when you solve them, that is the most rewarding thing. And then you sort of think to yourself, well, the guys chasing behind have probably got to jump over that hurdle yeah. in some way too. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's more a case of saying, don't be scared of it. If you're scared of it, and you're worried about failing, you're not an entrepreneur. Okay, so um, you uh, once sent to the Telegraph, um, when they were talking about why you do speak to entrepreneurs like you are doing this evening. Um, you once said, so, quote, uh, so much about entrepreneurship is about not being scared to give it a go. Therefore, as you hear somebody else talk about all the silly mistakes they made, it just empowers you and gives you confidence to say, maybe I can do this too. So, Ed, any particular big clangers or silly mistakes you can share? Uh, plenty. <laughs> um, I mean, I think... So early days, I remember when we had just bought Flutter um, and we put these two businesses together. I'd, you know, I'd spent quite a lot of money buying this business, relatively mm. speaking, and yet I was umming and ahhing, or we were umming and ahhing about spending you know, a few thousand pounds on a slightly bigger server. Yeah. These are the days when you had servers rather than the cloud. Um, and we very nearly screwed it up because we put these businesses together and you know, we were doing 12, they were doing three in sort of round numbers and you put it together and suddenly the combined business is doing 20. So there was yeah. a huge explosion of growth and we weren't ready for it. And yet we'd sort of said this might happen. Mm. And it was, we were just a bit too timid and we should have, we should have backed ourselves more there. Okay. You know, we were playing catch up. I think I learned through that that time, time is your most undervalued commodity. Mm. People talk about money, they talk about people. Time is a really, really crucial commodity. And so sometimes you have to do things in a, you know, overly inefficient, expensive way yeah. to sort of you know, maximize time. I think the other thing, candidly, that we didn't do as we grew was recognize that people, everyone has a natural ceiling, you know, ourselves included, and we probably weren't as good about sort of continuing to bring in the people that were going to take us to the next stage the whole time right, uh, okay. when, when we should have been. Okay. Um, I mean, they're, playing, they're, they're sort of ongoing issues which you always face, I think.